So what we're going to talk about next is what we can do at this point to try and detect other differences in the tissue. And as a starting point, if we think about what happens over time. So for example, let's say I have those two tissues, right? One of these is normal liver and one of these is tumor. So if for convenience sake, right, if I'm the patient and the magnetic field is going from floor to ceiling and we put the entire sample into the scanner, so the magnetization of that sample is going to at rest be parallel with the static magnetic field which is going from floor to ceiling. When we turn on, by the way, each of these have components that are precessing, but those transverse magnetization components all cancel out because of random phase. So this is what the samples actually look like. Now, if we turn on our B1, or RF, if you want to call it, at the Larmor frequency, we're going to see that there is a progressive rotation of this magnetization into the transverse plane. Okay? Now, of course, as soon as it rotates out of this orientation, all of a sudden we have net transverse magnetization and the transverse component magnetization is precessing. So as soon as we tip these off just a little bit, all of a sudden we have precession. And as we tip them down a little bit more, eventually they get into the transverse plane and they are rotating in the transverse plane. That's the point at which we've given just enough energy with our RF to get this 90 degree orientation. So I want to talk about two things. First of all, the reality is when we talk about the nature of the trajectory of the precession of this magnetization, as soon as we turn on our RF and things start to tip off just a little bit, it is precessing. Okay? And you can see that as we continually add more and more energy that we have essentially this dampening spiral until we get into a flat rotation around the static magnetic field. Now that's kind of a complicated thing to visualize. And it's what people who study NMR call the, right, the laboratory frame of reference. So it's called the laboratory frame because the laboratory is like the real world view of what's going on. So this is what is happening, is that you have this dampening spiral trajectory. But if we think about this for a minute, if you were, if we asked you to come and do an experiment with us, so Piyush, let's say we took you out to some New York City park at, uh, on the new moon when it's going to be pitch dark in the middle of the night. And you know, they have those little, um, turntables, I'm not sure what they're called, that, uh, not merry-go-rounds, but those little, those little things that, uh, you know, kid, they're about this big around, you get on, you can push them and they, they spin around. So let's say I gave you a flashlight and I asked you to hold it in your hand, hold it straight over your head, and I told you that I want you to take this and raise your arm down until it was horizontal with the ground. And after I put you on there, I'm going to take that thing and I'm going to start spinning it around very fast. Not 65 megahertz, but very fast. <laughs> so we have you spinning around, pitch dark, and I set up a camera on a tripod and we do a time exposure. You know what that is? You leave the aperture open and you continually expose it. So if we have you doing these revolutions around as you rotate your arm down, when you look at the picture, what is the trajectory of the light going to be? It's going to be this sort of dampening spiral, right? Because as you lower your arm down, you are continually rotating on the turntable. So if I take the same camera and I mount it on the turntable with you, and we do exactly the same thing again and take the same time exposure, all we're going to see is a linear 
trajectory. It will be a curve, but we'll see this sort of linear trajectory. So that idea that you can be inside the system rotating at the same speed that it's rotating while you observe it is something that is called the rotating frame of reference. And the rotating frame of reference is a convenient way for us to be able to simplify what we're talking about. So when I talk about these spins and we turn on B1, instead of having to deal with this whole you know, spiral trajectory, I can simply tell you that they do this. We simply knock them over 90 degrees. And it's exactly the same thing. There's no hand waving involved. It's, it's a true representation of what's going on. We're just making the assumption that we are inside the system rotating at the same frequency at which it's precessing. Okay? So with that, to simplify things, we've just said that when we start out at rest, we look like this. When we turn on our B1, we get a rotation, and if we leave B1 on for a short time, it's going to be some number of degrees. If we leave it on long enough, we will get all the way to where we make a 90 degree angle with the static magnetic field. There's precession going on, just since we're in the rotating frame of reference, I don't have to show it to you. Okay? This is what it looks like. So what happens then in the rotating frame of reference is that if we start out with some amount of longitudinal magnetization, right, which I'll call M naught, that when we turn on B1, it does that. And we end up with an amount of transverse magnetization that's the same magnitude, at least it may not be to scale, but it's supposed to be, as what we started out with in the longitudinal direction. What this is telling us is that at the end of the day, after this 90 degree RF pulse, as we call it, we have no more net longitudinal magnetization, and we have an amount of transverse magnetization, otherwise known as signal amplitude or signal intensity, that's equal to the magnitude of the longitudinal magnetization we started out with. Okay, is that, is that clear? Any questions about this? So the question, yes, sure. So if you leave it on long enough, then you get this transverse. Yes. Okay. If you leave it on longer than that. Good question. What happens? Okay, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think happens? Maybe a stronger vacuum attention. What does that mean? More phase coherence. How much more can you have? At this point, we have 100% phase coherence. You can't have more than that, right? <laughs> what happens? Does the patient get warmer? Hmm? Does the patient? Well, the longer you leave B1 on, the warmer the patient's going to get. That's true. But your question is, what happens to the magnetization, whether the patient is cooked or not? So what? <laughs> what happens is you keep going. Okay. Now you keep going. And eventually, or not eventually, but as soon as you pass 90, what's going on? All of a sudden, we have a longitudinal component magnetization that is in which direction? Is the opposite of how we had things in our resting state. So what that's telling us is that even though when you just throw the sample in there, that at rest you get some excess, or six protons per 10,000 at 1.5 Tesla, in the anti-parallel direction, that if you put enough energy in there, you can actually push things so that you have an excess in the opposite longitudinal direction. And you can take this magnetization and you can rotate it all the way around to 180 degrees. You can actually keep going to 270 and to 360. And the wild part of this is, which we won't talk about right now, is that you would think that when you get all the way back to 360 that you're back where you started and it should be the same thing. But it's not the same energy state. Right? And this and this is a this is a quantum mechanical thing. It's the interesting thing is if you go another 360 degrees to 720, then you do get back to where you started initially. 
but we're not going to worry about that. We are going to talk about leaving this on longer to get to 180 degrees. That has extreme relevance to things that we're all going to be interested in doing. Beyond 180 doesn't really have much practical application. It becomes more of just a, a curiosity. But definitely, if you leave the B1 on, you go farther than 90 degrees. And it's a higher energy state than where you were before.